Oh, man, is it beautiful out today. Practically no wind whatsoever. Nice and glassy. I see a kayaker way out there. And what am I doing? Cleaning the bilges. <clears throat> what am I thinking? Well, here you can see the condition that the boat was in underneath where the motors were. I mean, it was just really, really gross. I'm not sure I'd ever seen such a mess before in my life. Were I not broke, I probably would hire myself some salty bilge rats to do this job. <sighs> but alas, I've got to do it myself. And to make things even more fun, the way the boat's sitting now, water would collect into the engine bay. So I was constantly having to suck it out with the vacuum. Actually, everything in here was going to get sucked up with the vacuum anyways. Here's the oil absorbent I used to try to mop up some of the mess. And while that was doing its thing, I turned my attention to all the horrible electrical stuff that was strewn throughout the engine compartment. I mean, look at this. Uh, most of this stuff wasn't even used, like this gauge right there, and uh, all this stuff had to be torn out. And this was the tool I was going to use, the wire snips. This is going to be some horribly tedious work as I uh, trim all the redundant systems out of here. But little by little, I'm going to just pull all the old stuff out and try to make sense of what's in there. So it doesn't leave me stranded when I'm out there. The next thing that I wanted to tackle were these four pads here. There were four on each side, and that's where the motor mounts used to sit. The new motor mounts had more of a travel, and I don't think I was going to need these spacers. I was actually pretty pleased with how easily they came off. And when that was done, I got back to cleaning up the mess. I was rubbing in that material there to soak up the oil. And I was so out of my mind doing this horrific task that I was using my hands to pick it up instead of using a piece of cardboard like a, uh, as a dustpan. I just, I didn't want to ruin the dustpan that I had. Everything was gross. And as luck would have it, I got to do this more than once. Look at my hands, they're so filthy. But that's alright, because I was making progress. Here I finally have my, my gloves on, like a smart guy. And I'm putting that absorbent everywhere I could find. Empty Pringles cans. Empty boxes. Ugh, it was such a mess. It's bringing me pains just to watch this again as I'm editing. Let me speed this up. <sighs> I wish it went this, <laughs> this fast in real life. Next came the scrubbing. Here I'm using like a dish detergent like palm olive or something. And uh, simple green. It didn't work that good. Notice again, everything that I squirted down there, I then picked up. Uh, 
The idea was that I didn't want any to get into the bilges and then get pumped out into the bay. So every bucket full of slop got hauled away to be disposed of. Yep, now I know why sailors drink. <laughs> Speaking of which... This was recommended by somebody that lives at the marina and worked a lot better than my palm olive did. Several rounds of brushing and then hosing and then wiping. I was practically at my wit's end. Cleaning those grimy bilges definitely built up some pressure. <laughs> and that was me letting off some steam. Well, this is the engine compartment, uh, fairly clean. Still uh, some things that I have to do and a little bit more cleanup, but the majority of the work is done. And here you can see this is a tray that the batteries used to sit on. And what I did is I took it back to my house and I put a coat of paint on it. I happen to have some oil-based paint and uh, the thing with the oil base is that if there was any residual oil on there that I missed when I was cleaning up, it wouldn't matter because the oil-based paint would still stick to it, unlike water-based paint, which would just peel off right away. So I'm kind of hoping that I can do the same thing down there. I can use this oil-based paint down here where there is still, like if you, if you smell it, it's, it's still like at a, a film everywhere. So, what I plan on doing is uh, adding, a, not in there, obviously that still needs to be clean, but where the engines are going to go, this definitely wants to get some paint over here too, and maybe the bulkhead after I remove the uh, water pump and fix that hole, and I'm going to have to move some of the plumbing lines and wires and such, but i got a lot of work ahead of me. You can see here too. That water wasn't there the other day. That's leaking out of a fitting here on the plumbing. That's uh, There's a holding tank down below and it gets fed to the pump and then up through the plumbing to the shower and the sinks. And again, I think there's a leak right here. So there's a lot of things that have to be addressed still. But for now, I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on here and see how it sticks. Fun, fun, fun. I had a roller that I could have used to apply this paint. It would have been a lot faster. But the idea was to take this small brush and massage the paint into the material, or the, the old the fiberglass, try to suck up any oil that's there and kind of, you know, make sure that I don't get any drips or whatever, so small brush did good. Here you see the uh, fiberglass work that I had to do after I did get the place painted. I covered up that hole on the bulkhead and the holes where the old engine mount uh, had attached all got filled by stuffing that uh, fiberglass in there and later on I just poured some fiberglass onto those holes hoping that it would weep all the way down and make a nice strong fix for that. So here's my little scale. You put the cup on there, press the button, it zeroes out the scale. Typically I put about two ounces in there. That would be enough to use before it hardened up. The resin hardens up quick once you put the hardener in there. And I had to put about 10 drops per ounce, so 20 drops here, and I'd be ready to mix it up. Mixing the uh, fiberglass resin always smells really nice. <laughs> and you got to be very, very thorough with this. You got to scrape the sides and stuff. Usually it's a good idea to transfer your mixed stuff to another cup and then continue mixing, but I didn't show that part.
And there you see I'm just kind of putting a little bit on there right away while it's soupy so that it'll find its way down into the holes and hopefully uh, fill those old engine mount holes. And then I took the rest of it and I put uh, several layers on that hole that I had cut out on the bulkhead. And then within, you know, an hour or so, it's pretty much completely dry and hard as a rock. Fiberglass is pretty cool stuff to work with. A little bit dangerous. you got to make sure, you know, it's well ventilated. And wear gloves. and When you're done, you can come back and sand it down. I could have used a little filler, too, but I wasn't that concerned about making it beautiful. Now here... This is a big hole to be filled. And that shelf was going to get taken apart. The shelf was there to support the old air conditioner unit. I didn't really like that though because that air conditioner was going to pull air from the engine compartment and put it inside the cabin. That could not be good. So moving along, uh, I turned my attention to the plumbing. You can see this line here is a breather for the holding tank. So while you're filling it, uh, air will get pushed out of there. And as it empties, it will suck air in. You can see how rotten it was. It was just falling apart in my hands. It was the worst of the plumbing. But the rest of it was also the same type of material. So I figured this was a good time to replace it all. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, the uh, freshwater holding tank right there. That's pretty gross. There you go. That's actually in a good spot too. It'll drain right into the bilge, and then eventually that float switch will come up. Oh, it's actually not too much left in there. That's pretty interesting. You see the float switch there. That activates the uh, bilge pump, which is underwater right now. And it'll draw all that water out. No worries. Okay, here's the water pump. It's just four screws holding it onto the bulkhead here. And when this thing rattles, Every time the pressure drops a little bit, it turns back on and repressurizes the system. When that happens, um, it rattles the bulkhead a little bit. So I'm probably going to relocate it over here somewhere where it'll be uh, away from the cabin. And hopefully I won't hear it as much. But all this stuff here like this T and the valve, I mean that's just <laughs> like a garden hose valve and uh, you can, I can see lines here going this way on that little poly pipe so that pipe is all old and you got fittings over here that are leaking and I think again it's coming out of the pipe itself not from the fitting so those pipes are fixing to break so I'm just going to replace them with new pipe while I have all this empty space here <laughs> you know and it makes it really easy to do so I'm just gonna get all this out of the way and it'll be nice not to have this here when I'm setting the motors in place too so that you know the, the, it'll be uh, less likely to hit anything or break anything when we're putting the new motors in and it gives me a good chance to uh, paint all the bulkhead and redo these lines a little bit neater and nicer so there is no time like the present, I suppose. So let's uh, clean this mess up. Well, I'm going to remove this piece of wood here. And I'm going to put a bigger piece that fits in here properly in between here and that other painted area. And I like to have it square at the bottom. So this fiberglass here, that's, it looks original. So I'm loath to cut it out, but uh, 
whatever it's really ugly and all I'm going to do is trim it out here and across and after I put the wood in I might just add a little bit more fiberglass down there anyways doesn't seem to matter this wood down here is bare it doesn't have fiberglass on it <sighs> but it'll definitely uh, be a cleaner look than keeping this here like that I removed that temporary piece of wood uh, and I had brought a bigger piece that fit in there really nice. Getting it to go in there took a little coaxing. But I got it. Then I fiberglassed the parts where the seams were and added a little paint. The old engine compartment was starting to look pretty good. That's where the old motor mounts were. I got one coat of paint on them. Everything wound up getting like three or four coats of paint anyways. And here you can see the rest of the plumbing lines that I replaced. I was able to use the old fittings and the plumbing line itself is only like 28 cents a foot so in the grand scheme as far as working on boats are concerned the plumbing upgrade was really cheap it made me feel good to know that those lines weren't going to burst and all the water from the holding tank wasn't going to wind up in the bilges that would stink if you were out doing an overnighter or something and you lost all your water Well, that was a lot of work, I tell you. But I think I'm finally ready to put motors in. I got the hot water heater back in and secured with a little ring of wood that I put around the bottom of it. Still gonna put a bungee around the top of it, of course, but uh, I got the gas tanks painted and I got new wood floors in here. And I even painted a lot of the ceiling just for some reflected light so it won't be so dark and dingy down here. I've got my new couplers on the uh, prop shafts. Those are the ones that'll match the new motors. And uh, I've got to, I just can't keep the little stains out of the engine compartment, but uh, I'm gonna give it one last coat of paint and then I'm pretty much ready. You can see they're both done and man, it's come a long way since the, uh, that dingy mess, huh? See, I put a floor here too, and I put a little access hatch. Ooh, it's dirty down there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm gonna get to that eventually. But I've got the strainer for the, for the water pump attached right where I can get to it. It's attached to the bulkhead. Uh, so it'll be easy to remove that strainer. And I wound up putting the water pump back here. A lot of extra wires that are just sitting here until I get the install complete. Like these are going to be for the uh, generator, which I don't have yet. And some of those wires look pretty nasty. <sighs> I guess they'll get replaced too. But you can see that water pump is way back here. So that I don't have to listen to it from inside the cabin anymore. Pretty neat. There's the uh, hole where the air conditioner was. That's all finished. You can see I did the fiberglassing down there where I cut those pieces out. That looks pretty neat. Again, they got some wires just sitting here. These are gonna be the harness. They have to be put on top of the motor eventually. Actually, uh, within a few days, the motor should be in. It's pretty cool stuff, huh? Yep. I've also been busying myself with little things like I finished the uh, bamboo made a couple uh, hatch covers here that one still needs to be secured we even put weather stripping behind him to keep any uh, little bugs out and such and i finished this section of the wall here with some 
bamboo. And I still got to do the hatch covers there, and I got still got to do a thousand things. But uh, as of right now, I'm ready for motors. Stay tuned for the next update. It's going to be a good one.